from the rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Clark's Pump and Shop, Bud's Gun Shop, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Community Trust Bank, Friends of Coal, and by Kentucky Farm Bureau. Hello everybody and welcome to From the Rafters of Rupp. I'm your host, Kyle Macy. Kentucky basketball is iconic, not only for winning eight national championships, but also how the Big Blue fan base supports and follows their players. Worship might not be too much of an exaggeration. Many say that following is what truly makes Kentucky basketball. From UK's first All-American Basil Hayden to Louis Dampier, and Tubby Smith, or any member of this year's Kentucky Wildcats squad, Cat fans can't get enough. Here on Rafters, I not only talk with players and coaches who've been honored with having their jersey hanging in Rupp Arena now, but I also have conversation with players who may get there in the future. And if you've missed any of these previous episodes, you can find all of them on our YouTube channel at From the Rafters of Rupp. We have another outstanding show for you today as we take a look at former Wildcat Dwayne Casey, who is currently in his fifth season with the Detroit Pistons organization of the NBA. Dwayne grew up in the western part of the state in Morganfield, Kentucky. His initiation into the world of the sports was greatly shaped and influenced by a very notable childhood friend. My next door neighbor was Larry Johnson, who also played here at the University of Kentucky. So everything Larry did, whether it's baseball, football, or whatever, I did. I followed him around like a little shadow, I guess. And uh, that's how I got started in sports and really Baseball was what we really started at it. We played catch until from morning till night, and we had a big field, you know, next to our house. And so that was the biggest reason. And then my uncles, I, my uncles were like my brothers. We grew up together, and they went off and got married and left out, but they would support me in their, everything. They'd come and take me to games and take me to practice or whatever. Uh, but Larry, uh, you know, as far as an example for me, was the busy, biggest example of me getting started in sports. In his youth, Dwayne excelled in a number of sports, and yet there comes a point in every athlete's career when one must dedicate themselves to the sport of choice in order to reach the next level. But I would say probably my sophomore year, junior year in high school is when I stopped playing baseball. Um, and. I, I can't remember exactly why. I, I think because I saw where Larry got a scholarship to University of Kentucky, and I felt like, okay, uh, possibly I could do that too. So I really just concentrated on basketball. But up until that time, Kyle, I, is when I really, really, you know, was doing all sports, baseball, football, ran cross country. And uh, so I tried to do a little bit of everything up into probably my, I would say my sophomore year. Dwayne honed and developed his basketball skills under the guidance and direction of the head coach at Union County High School, Ernie Simpson. Uh, he was relentless on staying on us about, you know, defending and, and guarding your man and, and really don't rem remember the schemes or anything like that, but I remember him pushing us uh, to make sure we defended. And the other thing he did, he made it, he was consistent. Yeah, every, and you know, if we wanted to go play on Saturdays and Sundays, he'd come by the house and go open the gym for us. I never will forget that. So he really, and that probably also too was a, a catalyst for, for myself and for Larry and for all the kids in the community because he made it fun to go to the gym, play pickup basketball, because before that we were all on the concrete. We were outside playing, and when the weather got bad, we couldn't. But he made it possible for us to, to go in the gym, and, and we'd go by his house afterwards, and his wife Susan would fix dinner for us, and then we'd go home. Dwayne led Union County to consecutive 20-win seasons and was named to the Kentucky First Team All-State Squad in 1975. Murray State, Vanderbilt, and UK moved to the top of the college list for Dwayne. Fortunately for Cat fans, Casey chose Kentucky. Larry Johnson, like I said, I was following around, and I guess it continued once he came here to the University of Kentucky. I would come up here in the summertime and just bunk out on his couch. He had an apartment out at, I think, can't remember the, the place where he lived, but I would stay on his couch, and Marion was in the same apartment complex. And so I would come up and play with K 
Kevin and Jimmy Dan, and but my friendship with Larry, like I said, I started running around chasing him ever since I was in the city. So it continued on here to the University of Kentucky. Uh, Coach Parson was class on top of class, coming down to watch me play, and uh, Coach Parson just had an air about him that made you feel comfortable. And so uh, that put it over the top, but like you said, probably, uh, they would have had to tell me no before I wouldn't have come here, but just mainly because of Larry and spending time here at the university, you know, beforehand. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Dwayne Casey after these words from our sponsors. Today's Wildcat memory is brought to you by Rafferty's. Gather, eat, drink. We all got along well, and uh, we won the SEC that year. And we went to the regionals, NCAA regionals, and we got knocked out by uh, some team that had these two guys named Jerry Lucas and John Havlicek. Mm -hmm. And we got beat by 10 points in the regional by, uh, by Ohio State and have a check held me to 10 points under my average, and they beat us 10 points. So Lucas, he made like 12 out of 13 shots from the field, and have a check was just all over me, and uh, uh, they eliminated us that year. The 1975-76 UK freshman class included Truman Clater, Bob Fowler, along with Dwayne Casey. Gone were veterans Kevin Greavy, Mike Flynn, Jimmy Dan Connor, who'd led the Cats to an NCAA national runner-up finish the previous year. The team was young, and Dwayne earned his playing time as a freshman by working hard every day in practice. I think any time he got mad at anybody, <laughs> he would take them out and put me in as far as defense and hustle and hard play was concerned. Now looking back, I was that a daily piece of coming into practice, working hard, setting the tone, and I think Coach Hall was re rewarded me as far as, uh, you know, giving me a few minutes to, throughout the season to keep me motivated and that type of thing. Dwayne's freshman season ended with the Cats reeling off 10 straight wins and capturing the NIT championship by defeating UNC Charlotte 71-67 in the finals. In Dwayne's sophomore season, the 1976-77 Cats squad began the season ranked sixth in the preseason polls, and the anticipation of the start of the Kentucky season was heightened by the grand opening of the magnificent 23,000 seat facility in downtown Lexington, Rupp Arena. But what a great environment and, and gives you goosebumps thinking about it when it first opened up, packed house, 
uh, blue all around the arena and uh, never thought I'd see the day to be packed and it did. It, it, uh, it, it was a great, great experience being in that opening night playing against Wisconsin. Kentucky won the SEC title in 1977 and won 16 of their last 17 games heading into the NCAA tournament to face the Ivy League champs, the Princeton Tigers. I never forget Coach Hall that week going up to the game. Coach Hall said, you guys are practicing so bad, they're going to think two points in on you. You know, he, 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 tried to, he was trying to prepare us for the back door, and uh, that was my first experience playing in the Pitlastra. Uh, you know, small but very quaint, very uh, historic building there in Philadelphia. But uh, it was a great experience playing against a great Princeton offense. And, and uh, I think our size and talent overcame them at, in the end. But uh, it, I don't remember the score, but it was a great experience for us. The Cats down Princeton 72-58, then knocked off VMI 93-78, to set up an East Regional Showdown with number five, North Carolina, for a trip to the Final Four. But I never forget, you know, sitting there on the bench, you know, heard so much about Dean Smith, uh, how legendary he was as a coach, and, and you know, you were in awe, warming up and seeing him walk out there on the floor. And, but those were fun days playing there at University, I think it was University of Coldfield House, yeah. University of Maryland yeah. uh, at that time. Kentucky lost in that Elite Eight matchup with North Carolina, 79-72, and failed to reach the Final Four. It was very disappointing because, you know, we had high expectations. Uh, you know, looking back on it, North Carolina was a very talented team. And I don't know if it, would, it was a huge upset, but it was hurtful to us because we had higher aspirations. The loss to North Carolina and some roster additions provided off-season motivation to prepare the Cats for the upcoming 1977-78 season. And, and if I remember correctly, a lot of players had stayed in town to play, and then, you know, you had guys like Grevy, some of the pros would come back. But I thought that those games, those runs at Alumni Gym uh, that summer really galvanized us and got us, to, you know, together to, to get ready for the next season. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Dwayne Casey after these words from our sponsors. The 1978 Kentucky team was led by seniors Jack Givens, Rick Roby, James Lee, and Mike Phillips, and a 6'3 sophomore transfer from Purdue. Dwayne earned his minutes as a defensive specialist 
and his leadership qualities helped steady the team throughout the season. The Cats entered the NCAA tournament 24-2 SEC champs and ranked number one in the country. However, the lofty goals of that season seemed in jeopardy when Florida State took a 39-32 halftime lead over the Cats in the first round of the NCAA tournament in Knoxville. We were struggling. It was a little bit out of sync, not playing well. I think you were playing well. Uh, and then, but I think Coach Hall started myself. Was it Fred and LeVon Williams and yourself and Mike Phillips was the five we started the second half. Uh, and then we made the comeback, you know, and started getting the game going in our favor. Coach Hall's insertion of Dwayne Casey, LeVon Williams, and Fred Cowan into the second half starting lineup proved to be masterful. The trio cut into the Florida State lead and paved the way for a Kentucky comeback as UK downed Florida State 85-76 to advance in the NCAA tournament. Looking back on it from a coaching standpoint, I wouldn't have done that. But, you know, he saw something or knew something or felt something, and uh, we changed the game just by hustling, playing hard, and, uh, you know, contributed to coming away with that win. Kentucky advanced through the Mideast Regional with wins over Miami of Ohio and Magic Johnson's Michigan State squad. A 64-59 Final Four win over Arkansas and a 94-88 victory over Duke in the finals gave Kentucky the school's fifth NCAA National Championship. Huge, because uh, everybody looks at it and all the stuff throughout the NBA and coaching, it's listed in your bio, uh, you know, winning the NCAA championship and the NBA championship. People say, which one is harder? Both of them are equally as hard because you gotta, you know, it's one and done. In the NBA playoffs, you got you know multiple opportunities at the a lot of bites in the at the apple. So it impacted my life. When I come back, go back to uh, Western Kentucky, it, it's uh, people still remember, which makes you feel good. Before Dwayne's senior year at Kentucky, the Cats added freshman Dwight Anderson, Chuck Verderber, and Clarence Tillman. Dwayne served as the team captain of the '78 '79 squad. And after a slow start, the Cats rallied, winning 13 of their last 16 games before losing 75-69 in overtime to Tennessee in the finals of the SEC tournament. Then a 68-67 overtime loss to Clemson in the first round of the NIT ended the Cats' season. If you remember, Craig, we were very, very young. Uh, we had lost that core group, that older group that knew the system, the continuity of Jack and James and that whole group, uh, and, and it's so difficult to win with young players. But uh, we were just so young, it just took us a while, as our freshman year did, to gel and come together and, and keep growing. But uh, I would say just the youth and lack of togetherness was one of the things. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Dwayne Casey after these words from our sponsors.
As Dwayne Casey wrapped up his senior year at Kentucky, his teams had compiled an overall record of 95 and 20, garnered an NIT championship in 1976, and captured the ultimate prize in winning an NCAA championship in 1978. Dwayne stayed one year with Coach Hall as a graduate assistant at UK. He then joined the staff of Clem Haskins at Western Kentucky University, where he spent five seasons and stayed until 1986. So Clem invited me down, he and Coach Katie invited me down to Bowling Green to talk about, of all things, our weightlifting program and our running program. So I drive down to Bowling Green, I meet with them and talk to them about the 220s and the weightlifting program and how we lifted weights. So I spend the day with them down there, drive back. Probably about a week later, uh, Gene Katie gets the Purdue job and then they elevate Clem to the head coaching job at Western Kentucky. And I get a phone call from Clem, said, Dwayne, you know, would you uh, be interested in coming down and working with me at Western, Western Kentucky as an assistant? And I didn't even ask how much or whatever. I said, yes, I will. Dwayne spent three years on Coach Eddie Sutton's staff, then left UK in the wake of an NCAA investigation in 1989. Well, fortunately, unfortunately, I think one thing, Kyle, that they will talk about when I was assistant coach here, I think they will talk about the, the NCAA investigation, which is unfortunate. They'll talk about the 78 championship, but I think when they bring up Dwayne Casey, unfortunately, some people will talk about that investigation, which uh, is something that I'll never forget going through, uh, being accused of something that I, I did not do, that I proved in court that I didn't do. But it, it was a, a tough time, and we, we sued him for $6.9 million, and we settled for quite a bit of that. And um, we had $10 million in punitive damage to show that I had nothing to do with putting money in a package. There, to this day, there, nobody has seen money. In the depositions, uh, they asked the guy, you know, what was the, my lawyer, Joe Bill Campbell, asked the guy, what was the denomination of those bills? And one guy said it was all 20s. The next guy said it was all 100s. The next guy said it was 100s and 50s and some 20s. One guy that said he saw it checking the time clock, he wasn't even at work that day. So all these discrepancies in their testimonies and me knowing when the package left out, I was at the Diaper Dan in, Pitts, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Diaper Dan Classic. With, I'll live with that the rest of my life, the accusations of the Emory overnight package, whatever it is. Uh, it, it was a lot of politics involved in that, a lot of things going on, but I know in my heart and my mind, legally, I won the lawsuit, proved it in court under oath, which to me is more meaningful than an NCAA question. You know, you can, one thing you can do, people can lie to the NCAA or whatever, but they cannot lie in the court of law. So. I proved that in the court of law, I did that, but it, that was something that I hope uh, somehow, some way people can erase from their mind and know that my heart uh, has always been and will always be with the University of Kentucky. The relationships Dwayne developed throughout his coaching career directly led to an opportunity to coach overseas in Japan, where he successfully led Japanese men's and women's programs on an international level. On a return visit to the States in 1993, Dwayne's chance meeting with George Carl changed the trajectory of Dwayne's coaching career. I was coming back from Japan in the summer league in LA and I run into George and George says, Dwayne, what, uh, uh, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm coaching over in Japan. He said, well, what, you know, hang around. When are you going back to Japan? I said, well, we gotta, I got to go back in the, at the end of August. And this was like the end of July at that time. And he said, uh, why don't you give me, a, give me a call next week? I may have an opening on my staff. In 1994, George Carl hired Dwayne as an assistant on his staff with the Seattle Supersonics. After 11 seasons with the Supersonics, Dwayne was hired as the head coach with the Minnesota Timberwolves. From that point forward, Dwayne won an NBA championship as an assistant coach with the Dallas Mavericks in 2011. He served six years as the head coach for the Toronto Raptors, where Dwayne was named NBA Coach of the Year in 2018. And currently, Dwayne Casey is in his fifth season 
with the Detroit Pistons. The first four is their head coach, and this season serving as a front office consultant to the Pistons' owner and general manager. Assuredly, his coaching success has been phenomenal, and yet in his eyes, his family remains his greatest success. Met a girl there in, C in Seattle, um, and had to have two beautiful kids. They're, they're both of them were born in Seattle. We still have a place in Seattle, and because that's where she's from, so we still wherever I've been, we've kept an anchor there in Seattle. Uh, she went to Pepperdine University, and she worked for an agent, Steve Kaufman. Is how I met her. We had clients on our team in Seattle, so we met. Uh, she's younger, and and because uh, I wanted to start a family, and have two beautiful kids. My daughter Justine uh, plays lacrosse and basketball, and uh, you know, hopefully she she's you know it was, she's a great student because she goes to a straight A student at Cranbrook, which is a private school there in, outside of Detroit. My son is a basketball player and baseball player, left-handed, and uh, thinks he's better than he is, but, uh, but no, he's a good little player, but he goes to Country Day, which is where Steve Ballman went to school and uh, plays there. So they're loving the Michigan area, love that. I'm trying to recruit my daughter to come here to the University of Kentucky, and uh, we've been down a couple of times to see the campus and go to a football game, and hopefully it rubs off on it and, or both of them to come here and go to Kentucky. Dwayne Casey has reached the pinnacle of the mountain in the basketball world. As a player, he won an NCAA championship in 1978. As an assistant coach with the Dallas Mavericks, he won an NBA championship in 2011. And Dwayne was honored with one of basketball's most coveted awards when he was named NBA Coach of the Year in 2018. Dwayne has experienced an incredibly successful basketball career on a worldwide basis. And yet, there's no doubt that his heart and his allegiance will always be here with the University of Kentucky. And as a former teammate and a lifelong friend, I know I speak for Cat fans everywhere when I say, congratulations, Dwayne, on a fantastic basketball journey. You'll always be loved and welcomed home to Kentucky by the Big Blue Nation. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, when we hear more tales from the Rafters of Rupp. From the Rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Clark's Pump and Shop, Bud's Gun Shop, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Community Trust Bank, Friends of Coal, and by Kentucky Farm Bureau.